Honkai Star Rail has a strong hook. It does. It do. Now, this dude had the most optimistic opinion I've ever seen on Genshin Impact. So, I know this dude probably going to love Honkai Star Rail. I mean, hard as in... The story is good. Not... You know. At first, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to play this game. Why? It really came out of nowhere. It's so good. And they just got me. I uh, know. It's good, man. God damn it. It's so good, man! It's so good! Look at that fucking thing, man! The best goddamn gotcha in years, brother! So, this is unexpected. Or uh -huh. expected, depending on your view. To uh -huh. me, I didn't think I would be making this video. I didn't think I would be even playing this game. Why? I really decided to play it because people loved it the first time I played Genshin, so I thought this would be just more nice content. And here we are, attached to another live service game. Yes, sir! But this time, things are a little bit different because Honkai Star Rail has a really good hook which not a lot of games are able to pull off. What do you mean by and that? And so far, I haven't seen too many people talking about it. Okay. So today, not only will we talk about the overall state Hook, yeah, I know. She's like a she's like a baby. of the game. But we'll also talk about how this game managed to grab the attention of so many players without them even realizing it. Also, dude, you're a nuclear bomb that's been reincarnated into a girl. You fight a galactic dragon. You have to go from planet to planet curing cancer, and then you have to fight God. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. Unless there's something else. Because it's a pretty damn good plot. So, just like what happened in my Genshin review, there will be a lot to talk about, so I'm sorry if the topics go all over the place. Also, it should be obvious, I am not going to spoil the story for anyone who has not played the game yet. So, uh, are you sure you want to do this? What do you mean? I know what happens when you get overly positive about a game. You're making another 50 minute long video, aren't you? Yes, he is. No matter what game we are going to talk about, we have to start with the most important part. And if you've seen my previous reviews, you would know it's gameplay. Even though I am somewhat new to how Hoyoverse is dealing with their games. I know they mostly focus on action games. So when I learned that Honkai Star Rail had turn-based combat, at first I wasn't really that excited. To be fair, I really like strategy games and I Same. enjoyed being in silver during the StarCraft 2 days. And these days I still get to diamond in TFT every season. Yes, TFT is a strategy game. I, would uh, argue I don't know about that one, dude. It's kind of just... Pick a strat, hope you get the copies. If you don't, you lose. Ew, it is not just a game of chances. Anyway, It's an RNG manipulation game, so I guess, sure, you could call it turn-based strategy. That's fair. Anyway, while I enjoy good strategies, turn-based combat never engulfed me. Pokemon was always fine. I never actually played a single Final Fantasy game in my life. And in general, JRPGs never really appealed to me. Which is why... I was so surprised I liked the combat of this game. It is a turn-based game where you have a squad of four characters. With a timeline that shows you who goes next. All characters have their basic attacks which generate a resource. And then an ability that spends that resource. Yep. Also, every move you make charges up your third ability which is your ultimate. Which is That's cool as pretty much it. As far as I know, there are no special items or anything like that. At least, not during combat. Well, simulated universe, you get a special little big button where you summon the power of God to smite your enemies. It is only three moves per character which makes the combat feel very simple. And I would say... That's good, it makes the game very approachable by the casual audience. Yep. Which for the most part is Hoyoverse's main audience. True. But in reality, the game is just really good at hiding some of the complexities. Because every character also has an element. And every enemy has weaknesses against certain elements. But I wouldn't call that a complexity, it's like put the square block in the square hole. But striking a weakness doesn't just give you bonus multipliers against that target. It also damages their shield, which is kind of like a poise in this game. And once you break that poise, they get stunned, which means that you interrupt their move. And on top of that, they also take extra damage. This is such a simple mechanic that still spices up the combat. 
Lastly, because your characters only have three abilities, the devs make sure to give every character passive abilities that make them deeper. Yep. Now, even with those passives, most of the characters are still very easy to play. You either build the resource or you spend it. But sometimes the devs manage to make some characters more complex. For example, there is a support character that has the ability to buff your allies' damage, yep. dispel debuffs off of them, but also make them move to the top of the timeline, which the makes best them goddamn immediate. character in the whole this game. This is all just a single ability that has three uses. So meaning goddamn that there good. There are ways to maximize its potential. So sometimes the combat is not just blindly mashing buttons. It can actually get surprisingly deep. The only negatives I have on the combat come from some of the details. And Go this ahead. is where I may give some feedback to the devs. I have no idea if anyone will be able to see this. But from my very limited experience with not too many turn-based games, yeah. I have actually played a game that did some things better than Star Rail. Like what? And that would be The Ruined King. Yeah, don't forget that The Ruined King is a turn-based combat. Is that? It is true that their combat is a lot more complex, with each ability also physically placing you on a timeline with speed lanes. But there is one simple improvement what the Star Rail should borrow from the Ruined King's combat system. Okay. In Ruined King, whenever you want to use an ability, you can use the UI to target someone, which you cannot do in Star Rail. For example, let's say that my what units are, are low on health and I have a character that what? can heal. What I have to do is that I pick the ability, I look at the bottom to see who needs healing the most, but then yeah. I have to look up and find them on the battlefield. You can't actually click on the health bar of the unit. So I would really appreciate it if the UI was a bit more interactive. Oh, okay. In a similar way, the uh, timeline is... I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, okay. It's not interactive either. When you click on it, it does show you the speed, but it would be nice if you could directly target an enemy through the timeline. So for example, if I want to attack and I want to attack the first enemy that goes next, I should just be able to click on the timeline. I think that's a good point. Lastly, I would really appreciate it if I could just read the buffs and debuffs by hovering over the icons. Because if you want to see what those icons yeah, actually that's true. are, you that's have a good to point open as well. up a whole separate menu. Yeah, I it agree. would be nice if all of this info was available right there during the battle. But all of these issues are absolutely just quality of life changes which I would like to see. Okay. It's not really that much of a deal. Anyway, another part of the combat is the autoplay button. Now don't worry, I Stop. know you might be having no. war flashbacks don't. from Raid Shadow don't Legends. Do it. But here you mostly just use it to do the quick boring farms. Yep. The AI they use for these battles is not too bad, but it is going to make vital mistakes when you are fighting more difficult bosses. Speaking of which, another thing I should mention is that so far, at least at the beginning, the game has optional fights which do give you some challenge. It is not it just do. mindless battles where you can go AFK in the middle of the fight like you can in Genshin. You can be in the middle of a big storyline, find the side route into a back alley and yep. find a challenging fight with some extra rewards. Yeah, they will this whoop your ass. This really took me by surprise. And that's not to mention that after you finish some of the big stories, you will unlock more optional challenges. But I can't show you too much of those because that would be spoilers. Anyway, besides the autoplay button, we can also mention the double speed button, it's which good. appears in many turn-based games. But this function also comes in with a funny feature. You see, as the name implies, this button makes the game run at double the speed. So yep. you don't have to stare at the same animations you have seen a thousand times. But during major boss fights, yeah. Star Rail automatically turns it off so you can see all the cool boss animations. It's pretty smart. And that's when it dawns on you this game at normal speed looks like it is in slow-mo if you have yes, never played this game you does. won't be able to see it but give it time play the game at double speed and you won't be able to go back anyway lastly it's still insane. regarding the combat gameplay just like genshin has the dude time to speed is regular speed that's just the truth the spiral abyss which is an arena of bi-weekly rotating fights Star Rail has the Magic Mirror, which is pretty much the exact same thing. A number of rooms with challenging fights which give you extra rewards. But on top of that, 
On top of these challenges, Star Rail will give you a new activity. The Metaverse. Metaverse, like that, Metaverse, Metaverse! Thankfully, this game is very self-referential about using this word. Anyway, this simulated universe has levels of challenge, where you fight through three floors of enemies, but the entire activity is wrapped up in a really fun progression system. As you defeat enemies, the game offers you random buffs to help you with the climb, which turns this into sort of a rogue light. Kinda like what yep, would happen if is good. Torgas didn't have forced progression. But unlike what you get in Genshin, the powers you get in Star Rail feel more impactful. They are a bit more unique. It is not just flat buffs to attack or defense. Here, some give you buffs if you don't take damage. Others give you bonuses for defeating enemies. And some even turn your defensive stats into damaging buffs. I would say... Star Rail probably has one of the best first 120 hour experiences of any gotcha game for sure, but could also stand up to AAA titles for sure. It's just so f addicting for the first 120 hours. It's so f good. This game even has a whole journal that shows you all the possible buffs that you can get. But remember that all of these buffs are thematically tied to the cosmic gods, some of which you will unlock later so you won't be able to see everything from the very beginning. On top of that, you also get incentive to pick buffs which you have not played with before, because after collecting a certain number of unique buffs, you can claim some crystals directly from the journal. But that's still not all. On top of the fact that simply clearing the simulated universe gives you a currency, which fills up a bar which gives you more rewards, yep. which by the way reset every week or two, I believe, you also get a currency that helps you go through a special talent tree where you get special buffs that get active while you are in the simulated universe. So the just by screwing people around have already cleared this shit is insane to me. In this game mode, you are progressing through three different progression systems: the collection tab, the weekly progression, and the special talent tree. But that is still not all. Later on, as you climb higher, you will also get items called curios which can entirely change the way you climb. That's some For example, good there's shit a curio right there. that can give you double the random buffs. That's some a curio good that shit heals right there. you after every enemy you defeat. Or a curio that has a high chance of giving you more curios, but a low chance to almost killing your entire team. Yeah, that one just kills your team. I pick Galactic Big Lotto every single time. Probably about 20 times by now. It's worked out barely one time. It is so f bad it's crazy and i'm still gonna pick it again every single time this is yet another layer that makes this game mode even more interesting honestly the simulated universe is really fun to play through and after you finish the story this is a great part of the game to play for fun and for loot and i would be happy if this game mode became the game's quote-unquote end game Sam. so overall when it comes to the combat of this game totally ignoring anything else that is connected to it it is simply good. The chances are, to most people, the combat will feel fun. Simulated Universe is the best part of Honkai Star Rail by far. And they really need to make sure they stay on this because it is the best. And I do think it will, it will get better as more bosses get added, but it is the best. Chaos Hall, Forgotten World, can't even compare. Simulated Universe is crazy. And most often than not, how gameplay feels is the most important. Even though, yes, at the end of the day, the combat is very simple. You can't really go simpler than everyone making a move when it's their time to make a move. Unless you play Sila. Yeah! She's using some kind of weird symbols to tell time, and yeah! I can't read those. Yeah! Are you sure those aren't just Roman numerals? That's my girl! No. Maybe. So, with the combat gameplay covered, let's have a look at how the game goes outside of combat. It's great. Simply said, some people could say it is Genshin. Down to the fact that if you overlay the UI, it is identical. Is that bad? No. In fact, I find it really cool. It's really good. It was never an issue in any of the From Software games, so why would it be an issue now? They it's essentially not... take the framework of Genshin and its progression systems, which to be fair, work quite well, and they give it a whole new universe. Asterisk. 
and a whole new i feel like the progression system is fine but i will admit i'm starting to get a little bit scared on what the f to do because uh my progression slowed down just a little bit slowed down just a little bit new combat system the progression is the same down to leveling characters constellations item acquisition item leveling spending your daily resources which by the way in star rail you spend your daily resources a lot faster than you do in genshin if there is one thing I really don't like in Genshin, it is running around and catching butterflies on my phone because yep. I forgot to do it on PC before I went to bed. But Sucks. also, the games are the same down to the gacha system, how quests are organized into four categories where only the main quests are voiced, and really, even the things that they upgraded are just reskins that look better here. For example, in Genshin, your daily commissions are four purple dots on your map. Three of them are combat related and one of them is a talking quest. In Star Rail, they present you with a new system where you have to fill up a bar of Much 500 better. points. And by doing different activities, you get... Because the thing is, that daily quests will never, ever, ever be fun, right? The rewards from getting them will be good, but people just want to get that shit out of the way. So you might as well make it just do, do a couple things you were already going to do. Press the shiny button, then get the f*** out. Get a different amount of those points. But when you look at the daily tasks that you can do, you'll realize that you have to do three gameplay related tasks. And for the last one, you can do a talking quest. Or you can do a slightly harder gameplay task if you really don't want to talk to an NPC. That is a nice change to be honest. So gameplay wise, the system is the exact same, but the polish gives it the illusion that it is something new. The same goes for the talent upgrades. In Genshin, you just press a button that gives you higher damage on your abilities. After reaching a certain level, you also unlock a new passive ability. In Star Rail, all of these things are here in the new talent tree, where you have the same damage increasing talents and the same new passives. It is just okay. a nice illusion that hides it all. And again, it's all totally fine. I think the little buttons to get the extra attack and the three little passives that you unlock is actually amazing. Like, it feels really good. Like, it, it definitely feels like this version of quote-unquote crowns feels way better because it actually feels like you're changing the character. And because they're so scarce, it actually feels like an important moment when you do it because it can change the gameplay drastically for some people or make them drastically better, which just feels really fun nice like i really like that feeling it feels very rewarding for a player and the same thing goes for artifacts which are called relics until they run out and then they'll feel terrible to hear i'm expecting people to farm tons of these throughout their entire playthrough but again star rail gives this system a slight upgrade instead of farming a four set with one off piece star rail gives you six equipment slots four of them give you a two or four set bonus and then you have two extra slots that have a whole different set and again, this makes the already existing foundation even more interesting. And yes, light cones in Star Rail are identical to weapons in Genshin. Yep. Except light... Only you can't see them. Which me personally, I don't like. I think it would be cool if each light cone gave your character a little animation or a sprite that would follow you around. Like a little pet. I feel like that would be cute as... Because it would be the exact same thing. Rather than just design a weapon, you just design a sprite. My opinion. Light cones don't change appearance. Another interesting change is that while Genshin has all the different open world puzzles, since Star Rail doesn't have that, they had to introduce new... Y'all are saying nah? Okay, why would you not want the light cone to add its own flavor to the character rather than just be a uncosmetic stat stick out of curiosity would be cool but would need a toggle why it's the same thing as weapons in genshin you don't need a toggle for weapons in genshin why would you need that in uh Hunka? right or like give him like a tattoo yeah it's a great idea it would make me depressed watching whales okay i just think the light cones could be a little bit more than a couple extra stats pets seem kind of goofy i'm saying give you a visual element to represent what they are on your character rather than just have a little stat stick on your on your screen Okay, cool. Puzzles, which will mainly be the piping games. But thankfully for me, I actually really like those. Overall, the progression system was already good in Genshin. They really don't have to change much to let people enjoy it here too. So yes, in this regard, this game really is Genshin in space. But that's not entirely true, because the day this game came out, I noticed a massive difference. There is no jumping in this game. Like, yeah, how am I supposed to glitch out in this game?
Making people mad by running away from the story and going out of bounds was my favorite activity in Genshin. Mm -hmm. okay. Am I on the ceiling? Sam, I'd like to be around too. I actually, I'm actually height capped. Yo. I cannot go higher. Oh, Yanfei, hello. Hey, what's <laughs> up? What you doing here? Enjoying the view? I think I'm stuck. That's fun for one time and then you never do it again. Yeah. Sick. There you go, dude. Try to stay calm and listen carefully. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe. Be renamed to Honkai on Rails because there is no open world here. Yeah, However, I don't believe that is a bad thing. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing either because for the small controlled environments that they have, they're very full of life, right? Like just just like Bellabog, for example, just a little working choo-choo train is such a nice touch. Like I actually love it. Now, would I prefer if I could jump on top of the train and ride it? Yeah, because that's what your mom likes doing to my cock as well. It works really well for what it has and that makes me happy. And if you like exploration in your games, this game still gives you options. Along the way, as you go through the main story, you'll see bonus areas with extra challenges and extra loot. It honestly feels very close to how Mass Effect feels. It is a game that guides you okay. through pre-planned levels, but by fiddling around, you will still be able to find some hidden areas. And yep. again, I don't believe that the fact that this world is closed would be taking away from the joy of exploration. With no, nah, it really wouldn't because at the end of the day, sure, you get to explore Genshin Impact one time, right? And for that one time, it's really good. It's pretty much the same for Honkai Star Rail. Because at the end of the day, you know you're going to go to Inazuma and you're going to jump from roof to roof. Same thing with Orgrimmar. Same thing with like, you know, World of Warcraft. There's all that world, but you know you're just going to run around in circles in Orgrimmar. Doesn't really matter that much. That said, we also shouldn't undermine the overall level design. Later in the game, you'll notice that sometimes the game borrows ideology from, from software, where you go around in a big loop and then find a shortcut to where you were before. Yep. As you keep playing, you might notice how clever the level design can be. Speaking of which, I didn't even talk about how you initiate combat. In short, it is kind of like in the new Pokemon games. You just run into an enemy and trigger combat. But yep. you either strike them first and damage their shield, or they can ambush you and move first. On top of that, every character also has an open world ability. This can be a simple heal, an ultimate recharge, that heal or is so even good. damage buffs. But now, with the gameplay and the combat covered, we should move on to the one thing that is heavily connected to this. The visuals. First of all, going straight from the it's combat. beautiful, bro. I have to mention that the combat animations are great. From Fantastic. their basic abilities to their specials to their ultimates. And especially the ultimates is where the animations shine. Genshin kinda rides a similar boat with the animations. But in Star Rail, the devs are not limited by the fact that they can make the ultimates too flashy. There is no way you can visually flood your screen in a turn-based combat game. True. Or at least it can't make the combat unreadable like how it works in action games. I will admit, the Kakolia fight, I always lose track of my mouse. I'ma just be real. I, I do lose track of my mouse every single time I fight it for the weekly. So even on the visuals, the combat is simply great. Now, when it comes to the world and the setting, this will absolutely be subjective. Some people may not really be fans of sci-fi fantasy, but personally, I love this setting so much. I'm not a massive Star Wars or Star Trek fan. But I do love the Mass Effect universe, and it's I good. love retro space similar to Cowboy Bebop. And this game is exactly that. I don't really want to show you much, because I want to stay as spoiler-free as possible. But from traveling on board the Astro Express, to landing down on the unique planets, visually, this game can get stunning very quickly. And you just wait until you find a breathtaking boss fight because those are by far the best parts. But I believe all of this is linked to the fact that Star oh, Rail oh. is simply using a better version of their engine. As far as I know, Genshin is using a heavily modified Unity engine. And for Star Rail, they pushed it even further. 
Graphically, all the shadows on the cell shading are much cleaner. Yeah, the environment has richer contrasts. Partially, this is easily achieved because in a world that is closed, you can tune every detail by hand. But also, the engine has better in-depth lighting. And even when it comes to the character rigging, you can- I've never noticed how beautiful that unit looks until right now. Dude, the galaxy blades, holy shit. Find more details there. In Genshin, the facial rigs allow each character to have about eight different expressions outside of pre-rendered cutscenes. Only eight? And yes, on some characters, it is more noticeable than on other characters. But since Star Rail is using a new facial rig system that divides the face into segments, you can more than double the amount of expressions, Cute. which makes the dialogues far more lively. This is... Dude, if he thinks that Honkai Star Rail is on a new level, just wait till he sees the expressions in Zenless Zone Zero. Dude, Zenless Zone Zero goes crazy, crazy with the animations. I cannot... Wait for ZZZ, bro. Oh my god, bring me back to Nicole, bro. The greatest Hoyoverse waifus in another game I can't get to yet. It's driving me nuts. Such a nice change compared to Genshin's somewhat robotic conversations. But what's even more important, Star Rail has lip sync. Don't worry, this is not happening because of the rise of AI. Thank god. In reality, <laughs> this has been utilized in video games for decades. How do you think Oblivion or the first Mass Effect move the lips of their characters? They just write code that says, if the sound wave looks like an O, this is how the lips move. And if it sounds like an S, move the teeth together. And then they just feed all the audio into the system and it automatically animates the lips. Yep. In Genshin, they used a very simplified version of this, but only for the original Chinese voiceover. Everyone Which else is had to the worst. I cannot tell you how much it breaks your immersion when the character finishes talking and their mouth is still moving, or when they talk for the first half and then they end it. Get Paimon off my f screen! Right as if it was a cartoon. Which made the localization a bit slower. So to speed up the development, here they made the system flexible. And now it automatically adapts to all languages. And again, it really makes all the conversations feel more alive. Although, you can easily tell when a character without a detailed face rig is trying to speak. There is also <laughs> one more detail which I noticed when it comes to the characters. We'll talk about the overall character design in just a bit. But I noticed that the new engine is also utilizing new shaders. For example, the eyes of the characters are layered on top of their hair until you reach a certain angle at which the eye disappears. This is the same kind of shading technique that animes use to dynamically deal with hair. And although okay. this is just incredibly tiny detail, it subconsciously gives you the look of an anime. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it looks really cool. But you know what's the best about all of this? Even though this game is a visual upgrade on all fronts, this game still runs smoothly on all devices. It's smooth Obviously, there as... will be exceptions, some hardware will have problems, but on average, this game runs well on PC too. Which, to be fair, in today's day and age, is already a massive success. But more important than that, this game runs quite well on mobile. It is so good. It's good on mobile, but it still looks way worse than on PC. That while a full playthrough of Genshin on mobile sounds like a masochistic kink, here it might not actually be a bad idea to do a full playthrough on mobile for Star Rail. Even the turn-based combat is really good on mobile. And I myself have already played quite a bit on my phone before going to bed. But at the very least, if you are going to do that, I would recommend wearing headphones. Because the music will blow your socks off. It From knew. the very beginning, as you're doing the little tutorial fight. Like, uh, dude, I know people really like Wildfire, and Wildfire is amazing. But just the basic combat theme is just so good. I can guarantee the music is one of the first things you are going to notice. It is in your face from the very beginning. And it is there to show you that the music of Hoyoverse means business. There are moments when Genshin's music is great too. But in Star Rail, it is the opposite. The vast majority of the music is insane. Yep. And there are moments when it is just good. But that's still not all that Star 
every environment makes you feel a different way which I actually love. Like, it is actually so immersive. I love when you go into, like, the barren tundra of the winter and it plays like that, ding, ding, and it's so f sad that even the comments like, it's like, holy, I'm in there. RL does. Again, I really don't want to spoil this. Trust me, I would hate to rob you of that experience. But during some big moments of the game, the music fully embraces what's happening and it turns it up beyond 11. I'll be cryptic about this, but the people who know will know. For yeah. me, it was the train and the finale of the first planet yeah. that really got me. Yeah. So overall, yeah. just expect to be jamming all the way along the entire ride. And speaking of jam, it's got more than that too. When I go on my spaceship and I load in and I have my little cutesy, cutesy music playing, for Pom Pom, it makes me happy. Because then I see Pom Pom, and he's depressed. And I think that's hilarious. Wonder why? Because he lost his button. And I go find him and get his button. And then I measure him, okay? But that music makes me... When I, when I, go, when I go to my train, I hear the little flutes come in. You know what? You'll see it. Watch my stream. You'll hear the music. It's so cute. Now, before we jump into the biggest hook this game has, let's quickly talk about the gacha system. Yes, it it's is bad. a gacha system, which means that the vast majority it's, of characters are bad. left behind life it is bad. For your money. But thankfully, unlike it is in Genshin, where the main character is mostly worthless. Yes, I know the Dendro MC is good, and I know that Geo MC can work, but so can Bennett carry and Candice carry, so that's not the point. Anyway, the main character is really good, no matter what you yes, do with Yes, they them. are. Just don't look at the simulations, because there are so many disclaimers. Anyone who parsed in WoW will tell you these numbers are usually not what they seem. And they are f not. Anyway, this is such a pleasant change. And all the other characters you get with the main character are so good, you honestly don't really need to pull for anything. And I would also argue that the progression system- You don't need to pull for anything until you go to Chaos Memory and need two teams. And then you need to pull for shit. I will say, I would say the weakest character in the story is Don Hung, and even he is still good. Of the main ensemble. He is still good. Like, he's the weakest, but he's still a good character. System is more fun as a free-to-play player. Because you actually get a decent challenge out of the game that is totally beatable. But I always believed that was the case in Genshin 2. So, just to let you know, if you treat this game as... I'm saying weak as in character-wise. Like, he's probably the most boring character in the game. For, of like the main ensemble, I was the most the most boring character for for me, right? For me, just a single player game with no gacha systems. You are still going to really like this game. And in fact, if you go on Twitch and have a look around, you'll see that most people are going free to play. Wait, never mind. That's Arlon. That's Arlon. My bad. I forgot about him. Because you really don't have to pull for anything. Okay, it may be because everyone already sold their houses to pull in Genshin, but still. Look at how much fun everyone is having regardless. Look, if Tecton can stay free to play, so can you. Wait, what the f I'm in this video? What? Everyone is having regardless. Look, if Tecton can stay free to play, so can you. I did it. I finally won. But that could also be- <laughs> Bro, that is- Wild. He f follows me. Saw you put me in your newest video. That was f sick. Love your content, brother. That is crazy. Cause I think Necrit's co content is so good. That's crazy to me. How he f knows about this shit too. Oh my God. That is wild to me. Because of a different reason. It's an area where I would say Genshin is a bit stronger. And that's character design. Now, this is going to be another very subjective topic. But while I believe that Genshin's overall character design is very good, here, some characters may feel a bit more generic. And that's mostly because with the early story, it may take a while for you to get to know those characters and really appreciate them, but at the beginning, in Star Rail, you also don't have a lot of diversity in locations, which would also introduce new aesthetics. 
This means that without strong thematics, this game is trying to push the typical sci-fi feel onto yeah. all of their characters. Yeah. And as a result, if people don't like the generic sci-fi elements, they won't feel a good connection with those characters and they won't be encouraged to pull for them. True. With that said, yep. on release, Genshin had the exact same thing. For example, while I still haven't wailed in Genshin, I told Good. my chat that there are two characters in Genshin which I will most likely go after. John oh. Lee, because he is simply the coolest character in the story, and the Wanderer, because I love his gameplay. Dude, the f airplane shit is actually so cool. However, one of these came out in patch 1.3 and the other one came out two years later. So while in Star Rail, I, most I'm not gonna call him Wanderer, dude. Okay, I'm not. His name is Scarif Moosh, and I'm gonna call him that f name. Okay, I'm not calling him this goofy ass edge lord shit. Okay, because he listened to one My Chemical Romance album, but now, oh mom, it's not a phase. I'm good, bro. Your name is Scarif Moosh, and you can do the Fandango. People don't feel encouraged to pull. Just keep in mind, they don't feel encouraged yet. And already the game showcased some characters coming in the future which might be able to change that. Oh my in god. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this was their strategy. Just release all the good characters at the beginning so that people can just pull during the hype train and then you release some of the amazing designs which make them pull again. Yep. With that said, there is one more thing we can mention. Just like in my Genshin review where I told people that Hoyoverse knew exactly what they were doing with their characters. Yeah. Here, they absolutely know what they are doing. Yes, they do. And all you need to do is to look at Zila, an elite yeah. soldier from a freezing planet. In I'm sorry, chat. Zila is so fucking hot, bro. It's uh, what a good character. Like, gotta be in my top 10 gacha characters of all time. She is so cool. In a see through swimming suit who is too busy to zip up her pants. Yes, lore wise, she is a renowned character. People recognize her. At that point, zipping up your pants could be the least you could do. But honestly, the character design is still good. It's just that the context feels really odd. Still, rest assured, <laughs> that is not the only fan service you will find in this game. As you are unlocking all the different constellations for your characters, which in this game are called Eidolons, the art of all characters is following the same formula. The first level is the character from the back. The second level is their eye. Third level is their trinket. Oh, Fourth here we go. Fourth level is their iconic emotional expression. The fifth level is a zoom in on their chest, which is supposed to be their heart. And for the final level, you get to see them naked. Yes, <laughs> this goes for every single character. Yup. Except Hook. for any of the miners. Good. And this also goes for any of the 5,000 year old dragons. Good. All of those are fully clothed. Good. Thank fucking God. But besides <laughs> these, there are also the light cones, which as I mentioned, are a replacement for the weapons. And these showcase some cool art which- I don't know who this bitch is, but she is so fun. It may be teasing future characters, or it may be more fan service. Just let me read you the description of one. It started with sincerity oh, here we and go. anticipation, followed by a passionate catharsis, with one climax after another, until the record spinning came to a final stop, and those horse shrieks were no <sighs> longer audible. Mission accomplished. They knew exactly what they were doing. So you kafka until you come and then you bathe together is what the light code is saying so yeah just be ready for waves of fan service but now we covered all the ins and outs of how this game plays and from what i've said so far this game might seem promising to you so i believe it's time we talk about the main reason why i wanted to make this video it's the one place where I believe this game absolutely shines. Here we go. The powerful hook this game has, which immediately made me connect and which makes me want to play this game more and more. The side quest? The story. Yup. Really? It's good. This is the reason why we are here. This it's is good. the reason why you made everyone sit here for half an hour. Yup. No. Although, all puns intended, the story of this game is stellar. It's and crazy. it is absolutely worth it's playing this crazy. game only for the story. I agree. Even if for some reason you hate the gameplay. I'm a big sucker for sci-fi and fantasy. And I this is a sci-fi fantasy agree. with elements of steampunk. 
which is just an awesome blend. I really love the story introduction, how you start playing as an important mysterious character, but then you actually get to choose your main character, and then how you learn about the big threats of the universe, and how you get involved in a great space adventure. There were many times when I got story, big man. Mass Effect vibes from this game. Me it can too. really sell you the fantasy Me of too. going out on missions with your crewmates. And what really helps a lot with this is that the characters they give you at the very beginning are interesting. Everyone has they an are. interesting twist and a bit of mystery that makes you wonder what's gonna happen to them next. They're gonna and I would die. say the best one I, of these I, is March. Which is I guarantee that one of the main crew is gonna die. And to be honest, it's probably Don Hung. I think Don Hung is dying one million percent. It's crazy because, because right now there's too much foreshadowing. There's too much foreshadowing. Because she is the very first character you get to meet. She is supposed to be the Paimon of this universe, but her background is really cool. She was ob- Or shit, maybe they'll just do Himiko again, who knows. Obviously put there as a setup for something big that is going to happen in this game later. And so far, from the setup we got, I can't wait to see what happens to her in the next three years. Also, yes, we should point out that there is no Paimon here. For Thank f God! For a lot of people, Paimon was a massive hit or miss. To me, Paimon was not a strong character at the beginning of the story, but throughout the course of the entire game, she did have some good moments later. Did it make it worth it? This immersion breaking Dora the Explorer wannabe f space rat. F that character. But here, because Star Rail doesn't have a Paimon that would lighten every scene up, they can tell some more serious stories. Yes, they can. More about that in just a second. Truth be told, I also really love this universe. This game immediately gives you some story hooks regarding how the cosmic forces of this universe operate. But above that, I just love the overall aesthetics. As I mentioned, I truly got hooked on this game at the very beginning when you approach the train for the first time. There is a lot of things that happen at the same time here, and that's how the game got me. If you're interested, the full clip of that moment is on my second channel right now. After this okay. strong introduction, there is a little bit of a dip down as they try to introduce a new planet to you. Which, by the way, no spoilers, but I'm pretty sure I have seen that planet somewhere before. Nah, it, it ain't that similar. It ain't that similar, but I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But thankfully, the pacing very quickly picks up again. You can really tell that Hoyoverse is using what they learned from Genshin. Because the this, this dude just like League too much, man, I'll say it. The storytelling in Star Rail is equivalent to how they tell stories in Genshin in their latest content. It's just that here, the experience is not soured by the bad pacing that came before. Thank God he said it. The pacing for Genshin is so bad, it's crazy. In fact, I don't think I have any negatives when it comes to the story of Star Rail. Uh, there's three bad voice optional side quests, and that's pretty much it. And I'm pretty sure everyone who went through the finale of the first planet will yep. agree with me. Yep. The finale is, in my opinion, the best storytelling Hoyoverse ever pulled off. One million percent. And you know what's crazy? March 7th, March 7th line, after what happens happens, is just so beyond insane but it fits her character so much that it actually makes sense which is what i really like they understand how every character's dynamic would clear of that situation which which i actually f love i asked my chat and some people believed that sumeru was better than star rail but no! personally I kinda like Star Rail more than Genshin. Sumeru was so weak, bro. I literally, I lost my shit within four minutes of just un, unbearable dialogue for where I was at. It was around the Sinnoh quest. It was un bearable, dog. I'm not gonna talk about spoilers, even though I really want to. So the finale was just really good. Another thing I was afraid of is that I would lose on a lot of lore. Now, I will say, I will say, Genshin from Mondstadt was like a six. 
Leeway was like a seven. Inazuma was like an 8.5 to a nine. Inazuma was so good. But God damn, I cannot be f to try Sumeru because the start is so slow and everybody says just give it another shot maybe i will but holy shit it was rough it is just not the same as inazuma it's not even down to the environment it's just not as good as inazuma inazuma is peak genjin for sure bro because i thought that this game would be connected to their previous game which is honkai impact but apparently that is not the case Apparently the only thing the two games have in common are the names of the characters and how the philosophy of the cosmic powers works. And well. Besides that, all characters are totally different and they have all Besides well. All new stories. And I am really glad to hear that. But we absolutely have to praise the new dialogue system. Or the old dialogue system, it's just that here it is a bit more clever. You see, in Genshin, whenever you are in the middle of a dialogue, it doesn't really matter what you say because the outcome will always be the same. The illusion of choice is so f frustrating in Genshin, but I actually feel like my dialogue choices matter in this game, which is so nice. This is called the illusion of choice. Yep. And it is heavily utilized in pretty much every game you play. Like, really, 90% of all dialogue in all of RPGs is technically meaningless. And it's all about how... Mass Effect was so good. Let's see, the, the best games with choices that actually matter are probably Mass Effect and Fable. Fable was so good. Mass Effect was so good. The more good things you do, like the more, more, more even better things you can do, the more evil things, the, the dirtier you can get. In Fable, the nicer you are, you get like a halo. Or the, the meaner you are, you get like a dark aura or oh oh an overlord as well overlord oh yeah detroit become human bro so f and telltale games in general right telltale De telltale games in general good the illusion of choice is yeah. well unlike in genshin where the illusion of choice is paper thin yeah. in star rail every choice feels like it gives you a unique outcome because what the characters say really changes yeah. and that instantly makes the dialogue system more engaging it's a really tiny detail, but for all the story enjoyers, this goes further than you might think. Lastly, I also want to point out how far Star Rail goes with their overall world building. Besides all the notes and item descriptions, and yes, even the 3D models with all the journal entries for all the enemies, they also shove their cosmic lore into all aspects of the game. My favorite one is the simulated universe. The more you play it, the more you learn about the cosmic gods of this universe. Not just through journal entries, but by playing you also engage in conversations with those gods and you get to see what personality they have. And I love how like their personalities are indicative of what powers they have and when you play as the god you feel as if they're god, you have a small taste of their power knowing one day we will have to go up and fight the very gods that we are using to progress the story in order to overcome them. Which I feel like is such a beautiful story. It's insane. Like every single time I use like destruction, it's so cool how I'm using the nuke's power to become stronger knowing one day I'm going to have to overthrow him. This is honestly such a clever way to connect the gameplay with the story. So overall, again, I highly recommend playing this game just for the story alone. Hoyoverse is really utilizing the best of what they learned over the last three years. And it really shows. It does. Come on. Wait till this dude tries Zenless Zone Zero, bro. Just wait. Dude, when people see that game, they're gonna lose their mind. They're gonna lose their mind. It's so good. Amanda, we have arrived. But finally, we are here. This is where Star Rail's greatest hook lies. The go. one aspect that separates this game from everything else. Pom Pom, the cutest little guy. Hey, where am I? Show me Pom Pom. Hey, you're gonna get hit by the bus. You're gonna get hit by the bus, man. Might wanna move. that a trash can yep this is the reason why you made this video and 
hour long video for this. Absolutely, because you see, this is funny. Yep. I don't mean this. I mean, this game is funny. It it's been be. a very long time since I've seen a game pull off this kind of comedy this well. I cannot remember the last time I laughed in Genshin. And if you're asking why I'm bringing it up, it's because it's important, right? Because this is showing that Hoyoverse is getting better, which is important. This game is so f funny, it's ridiculous. It's simply really good and that shouldn't be taken for granted. Now, of course, comedy is highly subjective. So first of all, we have to mention that writing comedy is hard. It is. I mean, look at this video. Also, look at some other games that try to be funny. Forspoken and more than that, Tiny Tina's Wonderland are great examples of when the comedy does not really land. Dude, don't get me wrong. I f love Tiny Tina's Adventure. I do. The game is so fun gameplay wise. The writing is so bad. Even when you're bringing like legends like Andy Samberg into your game and you still flop, that is insane. And in Star Rail, the style of the comedy really makes this genius. Because a lot of people will recognize this humor from Undertale. Yep. It is the highly... Very self-aware, like tongue-in-cheek. It's so good. Self-referential humor that breaks the fourth wall whenever it makes sense. In a similar way, you might also recognize this humor from Stanley Parable. And in both... Bro, such good examples, Necrit, amazing job two very very smart types of comedy deliver it is so good good for all ages being aware of what's happening in the game is fine it is not an immersion break it is fine it is funny we are now smart gamers we are moving to an area where we get it we can buy into the world have a nice little fourth wall break it's funny all good man both games, everyone agrees that the humor is great. Yep. And right now, I would not be afraid of putting Star Rail right between them. But yep. don't worry, it's not that this game would only be about the humor. Most of it comes from the side quests, which means that it doesn't take away from the seriousness of the story. But even in this case, if you really want to turn this game into a comedy, you can do that because you hold control over the main character who is the comedic relief. Here, it is not in the hands of Paimon. You can decide when you want to make a situation funny or when you want to go for immersion. And this freedom of choice I helps love it. a lot. It in does. many ways, it is what separates... Dude, the first time I got like the token of like good faith, like the, the good Samaritan badge, I was like, oh my god, I... I love this game, man. It's so funny. Star Rail from Genshin. Genshin yeah, has a serious story morals. that sometimes can get funny. Star Rail perfectly mirrors that. This game is mostly funny, but it can also get quite serious. Which is great to see, because if Star Rail was too similar to Genshin, a lot of people would just not bother to play Genshin in yep. space. Also, I didn't know that this game was marketed as a space comedy. That's why the great humor threw me off guard. And that's why it was such a pleasant surprise. At this point, the main meme is the main character going through trash. Sampo! You'll find a lot of jokes there. Which, by the way, it is amazing that- Sampo is a criminally underrated character. Sampo is, is one of my favorite characters in the entire story. Down to his VA. God damn, I love Sampo. This game has a currency for engaging in jokes. You will get what is called praise of high morale, yep. which you can then spend on other jokes. They have their own comedy progression system here. But besides those, just by interacting with random objects, you might get a good laugh. My favorite one was the closet, but you'll also find jokes in item. Yeah, I found Rafflegator in there. Descriptions, solid water made me scratch my head. And yes, I won't spoil how or when it happens, but you might also get Rickrolled. And there is also yep. a secret comedic ending which you can trigger at the beginning of the game. Yep. Speaking of which, if you take too long to pick your character, you will find more humor there. And the comedy just I keeps know that. piling on. Again. Oh, that's right. Doesn't like Kafka and Silverwolf like make fun of you for taking too long to pick? I remember, dude, being a streamer, stalling that shit out, they were shitting on me the whole time. The best way for me to describe the feeling I got from this is that it felt like I was playing Undertale again. It's yep. self-referential jokes in places where you wouldn't expect them. And I absolutely love it. Sam. So, are you happy? Made your peace with a trash can. Can we just go now? Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah. So, how Good much shit, did man. you get? What do you mean? People got 
not sponsored to play this game. What? I did it for free? Damn, bro. Feels bad. Hey, don't worry. I didn't get sponsored either, Nicrit. Don't worry, buddy. Feels bad. But that was a damn f good video, right. bro. Easy claps and chat, Nicrit. Here's the video, boys. Go like, comment, subscribe. Also, uh, yeah, this is probably on YouTube. Yo, what up? This video is just so goddamn good. So goddamn good. W. 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 W.